Welcome to service here at St. Paul's. It's wonderful to have you here with us tonight uh, for our fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today we uh, continue to celebrate growing in Christ and uh, growing in faith and love towards Him and in uh, love for one another. We'll be using the service of prayer and preaching. Uh, you can follow along up on your screens um, and you can also uh, uh, see our hymns and all of our readings up there as well. And so I invite you to join in our opening hymn, which we'll sing the first four verses of, and then um, after our opening psalm, we'll sing the last three verses of, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. God's blessings on your worship tonight. Please rise. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God then dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your just decrees. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your just and righteous decrees endures forever. 
Please be seated for the last three verses of our hymn. Testament reading for this evening comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. Jeremiah continues to have difficulty as he does his ministry uh, among the people of Judah. Uh, he has declared to them that the Lord will put them in exile, uh, with Babylon being their captors. Uh, however, another prophet named Hananiah comes in and says, no, nope, Jeremiah is wrong. And so this is Jeremiah's response to Hananiah's prophecy. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly set, sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our epistle reading, we hear from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7. St. Paul is uh, concerned here, uh, reminding the Christians in Rome that uh, they, they know about sin because they've been given the law, the law of God, which is the Ten Commandments. And from that law, they have been able to identify what their sins are. And so they don't have an excuse to continue to do wrong things. St. Paul writes, Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? Thus, a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. 
Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. So the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, produced, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for a reading from the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus continues his discussion with his disciples as he did last week with a rather negative tone saying that what he brings into this world is not necessarily uh, unity, but division because the message he brings can and does divide people. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a, cold, a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be to each and every one of you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Which would you rather hear? The truth or the lie? It's probably a silly question if you, if you ask it in that way, right? Because there's none, there's none of us that would prefer to hear the lie. We want the truth. We want to know what's really going on. We want to know what is real, what is genuine, what is authentic. We don't want the fake, the false, the unreal. But what if the truth is hard to handle? What if the truth is something that is hurtful? Something that cuts you deep inside? What if it's not easy to handle or hard to hear? What if the lie is easier on the ears? That's more palatable. Does that change your answer? Would you rather hear the difficult truth or the easy lie? Many of us would like to think that we value truth, that we would want to know what's real over being comforted. That's not always the case. 
And it's not always put into clear-cut terms, is it? Hardly ever do you hear someone say to you, here's the truth, or here's a lie. But you have to determine that for yourself. Today we hear of a truth and a lie. The prophet Jeremiah has prophesied from God himself. God has said to Jeremiah, go and teach my people. Tell them that, they, that, that the, the ruler of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, is going to come. He is going to put them into chains. He is going to exile them away because of their sin. And Jeremiah does that. And Jeremiah, even from the words of the Lord, tells them, you must serve Nebuchadnezzar now. The Lord says, serve this king because this is your penitence. This is your repentance for your sin. And in the midst of all this, the temple gets ransacked. The, 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 the precious vessels in the temple, think of our communion where the, that kind of stuff is taken from the temple. The king himself is put into exile. Lots and lots of people from, from, uh, from Judah are put into exile. And Jeremiah comes and says, it's going to happen to the rest of us too. That's the truth. But Hananiah decides he's going to say the opposite. Hananiah says, no, in fact, I received a word from the Lord too. The Lord says that in two years, this is all going to be over. In two years, our king's going to be back. All the stuff's going to be back in the temple and everything's going to be perfect. So which is, which is easier to hear? The lie or the truth? The truth that the People of Judah will be taken into exile, that life is going to be tough, life is going to be hard, and it's because of their sin? Or the lie that says, nope, everything's going to be just fine, don't worry about it. And so this is what prophet, the prophet Jeremiah says after he hears these words from Hananiah. He says, amen, may the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded me, you and me, from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Basically, Jeremiah is saying, well, I hope you're right, Hananiah. And when we see it, we'll know you're right. But if you continue reading in the book of Jeremiah, you find Hananiah dies seven months later because he had spoken falsely about the Lord. Hananiah was offering false hope. He, it's easier to hear false hope in the moment, isn't it? It's easier to have that lie to cling to. Even though we, want, we say we want the truth, that lie is more comforting because it doesn't cause us that anxiety. It doesn't cause us that trouble or that worry. We, we want to believe the lie as opposed to the harsh truth. Because he was offering a promise that God had not made. He was saying God had said something when God had not said it at all. Now, we're actually really good at this. I don't know if you realize this. We're good at creating our idea of what God would want for our lives. A lot of times it has nothing to do with scripture. We have this, this vague understanding based on Sunday school and church that God is, well, he's good, true, he's kind, good, he's he, uh, you know, he, he's a blessing kind of God, good. But we, we use that information that we have and, and we create for ourselves these false hopes. We create for ourselves these lies. And oftentimes they are an excuse for our sin. 
that we might be selfish, but we say, but God would want me to be happy, and so it's okay that I'm selfish. Or we tell a lie or we gossip and say, yeah, but God's okay with it because he knows why I'm doing this. Or maybe the lust of our eyes or of our hearts or of our heads, and we say, yeah, but God wants me to be happy. God wants me to live in my truth. God wants me to be the person I am. We give ourselves false hope that has no basis in reality, no basis in God's word, that God is totally fine with whatever we want to do because he wants us to be happy. We're just like Hananiah. We say, don't worry, God won't punish sin. Don't worry, you can trust in yourself. This interesting time that we're living in, a time of both pandemic and social and civil unrest in our country, in my, in my uh, understanding, has truly laid bare the idols that we didn't perhaps realize that we were constructing. The idols that we had built in man-made institutions. The idols that we had placed our false hope in and we have said, you know, you know, we live in a really blessed country and we do, but nothing bad can happen to us here. Nothing really bad can happen to us. And if it does, someone else will take care of it or will take care of it. But it seems that all these powers of our world, including our own, stand powerless in the face of forces we cannot control. Sure, we can have opinions on the best way to go about these things, but the reality is we are not the ones in charge. We have given false hope into the hands of mankind. We also see this in American evangelicalism, American Christianity. There's this false hope that if, you, if your life isn't the way you want it to be, if you're not as rich as you want to be, if you don't have the stuff you want to be, well, then you just need to make yourself more righteous. You just need to make yourself pray more often. You need to read your scriptures more. You better try harder and do better, and you can have your dreams. If you listen to about 90% of televangelists, that's basically what they're saying. And it's false hope. It's a lie. It's not scriptural, but it's from our own ideas of what God is. So perhaps where do we turn when we want to know the truth, whether it's easy or whether it's hard? Where do we turn when we don't want false hope, but we want we real hope? Of course, we turn to the word of God. We turn to scripture. It's not always comfortable. It's not always easy, but it's the truth. And so in our gospel reading for tonight, we heard two, uh, some, some things Jesus had to say that were not easy to hear. But they're the truth because they are the words of God. He says, whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. and Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You know, our real hope is not in an easy life. Our real hope is not in our happiness. Because Jesus says, if you, if you trust in me, you're going to have a cross to bear. If you trust in me, your life is going to be lost to you. Because we're going to have a cross in this world. Maybe that cross is defending the faith against those who would be unbelievers. Maybe that cross is being a parent who raises godly children and, and, and even in the midst of difficulty still continues to show them the grace of Christ. Maybe your cross to bear is that you live in a household that, that doesn't want to listen to you, but you continue to pray and offer that grace and consolement of Christ Jesus. Whatever your cross is, Christ calls us to bear it knowing that it's not about us. It's not about our lives. It's not about fulfilling our happiness because he says, lose your life. Lose your life and you will find it. He isn't, he, he isn't necessarily pointing towards martyrdom here. 
You know, we read this and we automatically think, okay, that means we need to go to a hostile country against Christianity and, 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 and die in the service of Christ. That's not what he's saying here. He is saying that we stop looking at ourselves and saying, how can I fulfill my life and look at Christ and say, Christ is my life. Because the false is easier to hear. The false is saying you're in control. Nothing bad will happen to you. If you just try hard enough, life will work out. But our true hope comes in suffering. Our true hope comes in blood. Our true hope comes in death. All of those from the cross of Jesus Christ. We look at the cross of Christ and say that is true hope. The execution of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is true hope. And that is hard to see how. But when you begin to understand that it is an execution and a damnation that didn't belong to him but belongs to us, that he has taken from our shoulders, that he has taken from our backs, that he has taken off of us, that he has borne our cross for him, or he has borne our cross for us, The hope is not in our ability to save ourselves. Our hope is not in our own righteousness. Our hope is not in the power of our hands or the money in our wallets or whatever it might be. Our hope is in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our hope is not in ourselves, but in the one who came to save us from ourselves that we are God's people because Christ has chosen us. Our lives are lost, but are found in Christ. Let us continue to look to him as the creator of us, the sustainer of us, and the continued builder up in our lives. That in the midst of a difficult world, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of false hope, we know where we can always turn to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died in our place and rose again so that even death itself cannot defeat us. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. In this time now, we normally gather our offerings, but since we're not passing the plate, you may put your offering in the plate in the back of the, of the, narth, in the, in the narthex or of the sanctuary, and we also are continuing to offer online giving through our website. We rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray you to rule and govern and all her pastors and ministers, that she may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, defended against all adversity, and protected from all adversaries, that our faith may be strengthened and love increased. Bless the efforts of missionaries who seek to spread your gospel, especially Paul Flo, Henry Witte, James Sharp, and Carl Hansen. Grant health, wisdom, and integrity to all in authority over us, especially the president, our governor, the Congress, all legislative bodies, all judges, and all magistrates. Endow them with your spirit and with respect for your word that they would serve the maintenance of righteousness and the punishment of wickedness so that we may all lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Give peace and protection to all medical personnel, firefighters, emergency responders, police officers, and those in the military, especially Mike Shannon and Jesse Richardson. Grant also to those in trouble, in sickness, in anguish, in danger, any other adversity, your spirit for your grace of healing, strength, and comfort, and relief. Bless especially those who suffer. Hear us on behalf of Phyllis Winterfeld, Jody Gradert, Marjorie Johnson, 
Terry Vanderham, Kent Hoogland, Vivian Johnson, Jesse West, Shirley Kane, Dolan Grasshoff, John Hamilton, Yvonne Van Wy, Bruce Smith, Christy Armstrong, Todd Dagan, Ron Hulsoff Jr., Ernie Harms, Ashlyn Isles, and those we name in our hearts. Give them courage to stand firm in their afflictions and patience until the day of your deliverance. Preserve us from pestilence and every evil. Give to us favorable weather and cause the fruits of the earth to prosper that we may enjoy them in due season and offer you praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness to us. Lend your blessings to all honorable vocations and honest industry that we may serve where our skills and abilities may be of good use. May we be encouraged by all that is good, right, true, and beautiful. Give to all husbands and wives grace to live together in love and faithfulness. Bless the homes and families of your people that they may be places where your name is honored and love is nurtured. Give your special grace to the widowed, the orphaned, all mothers with child, the aged and the infirm, that we may grant them comfort, aid, and protection. All these things for which we would ask of you, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we are bold to call you Father, and in whose name we pray, trusting in your mercy and confident that you will give answer to our prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, Grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart. That by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
Good evening. Welcome once again to the Lord's house. It's wonderful that you could join us tonight uh, for our service. A few announcements. You may have noticed uh, uh, that Bonnie has printed off a newsletter uh, that is in your mailboxes. It has just some information about some upcoming things. Um, also a little article from me in there, um, some birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, so if you want to pick that up, just remember that's in your box there. Uh, also in those announcements, uh, next Wednesday we will not be having service here. Um, because the, the, that next Sunday, which is July 5th, is our annual uh, town service at the park. Um, that's for the July 4th weekend. So Sunday morning will be the service that we have at 10 a.m. Uh, we will not have service here on that Sunday morning either. Uh, so it'll be service over at the park at 10 a.m. It is hosted by the uh, Christian Reformed Church. Um, we will not be serving a meal this year. Normally we have a potluck meal with some burgers or something. Uh, we've just decided because of the, the pandemic, we're going to back off on that um, and just have the service 10 a.m. Sunday. So again, no service here next Wednesday. Uh, service in the park next Sunday morning uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, on July 5th. Also, uh, we're going to be out of town from the 1st to the 6th. Uh, if you have any um, uh, pastoral concerns, uh, you can contact Pastor Lowe over at Trinity um, in Hayward. So uh, that's the announcement. So uh, God's blessings to you all and have a wonderful week in the Lord.